If only there were some games we could play. Well, hello there, and welcome to this video where Laura and myself are gonna go over a couple of code submissions and game submissions from our latest and greatest Builder Challenge Hackathon. Now, this hackathon was all about building what? Video games. Building video games with Amazon Q Developer and AWS services. So stick around until the end to see who won and also see, well, the reactions of Laura and myself on what the code does, how does it do it, and maybe, maybe even we learned something today. Right? Perhaps, yeah, you perhaps. never know. In this hackathon, we had over three and a half thousand participants, and the prize pool, pool was over a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And we asked you folks to use tools, generative AI tools such as Amazon Q Developer, Bedrock, DynamoDB, API Gateway, Amplify, all of those AWS stuff to help you build these games. Is this something you can play on your computer, on your phone, on in the browser, on what? Yes, yes to all, all of, of the those. above. All of the above. And uh, we're going to have a look at what exactly did you do to build those games. Let's start with third place, Dual Knights. We open in the kingdom of Dualaria, two knights, Flame and Aqua. Um, the quest here that this developer built is essentially there's been a catastrophic event. Uh, a variety of these crystal sigils are floating around the world, and our two knights are tasked with finding them. Um, one very cool aspect of this is while one knight takes a step, the other knight has to take a step in the opposite direction, and that's where the game magic begins. Um, Darko, what's in the code? First of all, the game looks great. I love, I love the art style, so shout outs to the artists. Um, the code itself, um, what I can see here straight from the, from the re repo is that it is using a Flutter, is using Flutter to do this. Now, it is probably using some sort of a specific game engine here. Now, I can go ahead and look through this code, code thing and I do kind of see what's happening here for a second, but I'm actually gonna use Amazon Q Developer to help me understand what this thing does. So by using the add workspace feature, um, it basically can reference all of the code in the code base. And what I can do here is then uh, tell me how, let's ask it some fun question. So if I told it to kind of tell me a little bit about this project, what are the, some of the key source files and even what the, what is the engine it's using here? Because it kind of knows your whole, whole code base, it's able to, to kind of tell us certain things about this. So it is using Flutter and the Flame game engine. I've never used Flame, but it's a, apparently it's a popular um, game engine for Flutter. Uh, main game class is the, in the dual knights of dark thing. Key source files and their purposes are dual knights. Okay, so we have a couple of things here. Um, and I, I'm gonna actually open up this file. Just wanna see dual knights uh, the dart. And in this case, we see the whole, whole big old class that explains the game from um, understanding the mobile build to like black background music to specific constant sounds is gonna be using. So a lot of stuff is happening here. Now, um, I could potentially select this thing and kind of, it can tell me what this class does, but I think it's, it's pretty much self-explanatory. Um, I actually wanna see, because I know there's something about Amazon Bedrock in this case, right? Yeah, definitely. So these game developers actually used um, Bedrock, the Anthropic Cloud Haiku model, mm -hmm. to generate um, in-game commentary in real time as players move about the world. Mm -hmm. um, the NPCs are kind of interacted with your character, and all that character dialogue is generated via Bedrock. Exactly. And there's this function called um, Get Character Dialogues. And if I select this function here and uh, right-click Amazon Q and explain this code, you will see that it's gonna send this specific function there. It's gonna tell us, this code shows, shows uh, a method, um, get characters dialog, that fetches dialog content for game characters. And then it basically uses JW tokens, uh, somewhere online sends a thing, offline path. The interesting part is that it's excluding Amazon Bedrock. Notice the Bedrock ask. Now what, what's interesting about things, this thing, it's not actually calling the SDK directly, yeah. but uh, the, the developers behind this built their own API at the back end that would actually call Amazon Bedrock for this. So it's really good uh, because we have generated um, uh, a dialogue between characters, which is really, really, really cool. Very cool, and it keeps the game fun too. They're interacting with you while you're making certain actions, so in theory, the dialogue will be different as you play through and for different playthroughs. The problem with this is that it's not gonna generate enough memes, right? It's, you know. Probably um, not. Do you know I took an arrow in the knee? I knee? Don't. Oh, God, you're too young. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and in our second place, it's the game Blitzer, made by two guys from Mauritius in 50 days. Now, the fun thing about this, they own a pizza shop. And <laughs> with they, by owning the pizza shop and running the pizza shop, they also built a game in 50 days. Let's a lot of late nights, I'm sure. A lot of late <laughs> nights. So here's the Blitzer, and it's, it's an actually 
amazing game. So start, start that, let's see. We have a little character here that can, uh, uh, well, shoot stuff and, 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 and dash. It, it, again, huge fan, it's kind of like a twin stick shooter, right, I think. And if, you, if, I'm, if, I, if I don't, yeah, oh, you can do it, you can do it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Again, the same, I love me, I love me the art of the game. And as you can see here, it's like kind of like a, oh. <laughs> like a, almost like a bullet hell, but not really. And then you get to shoot stuff and jump stuff and, and, and avoid stuff and survive. One other cool aspect too, Darko, while I'm watching you play, um, the developers mentioned that they actually use Bedrock, specifically the Anthropic Cloud Sonnet 3.5, to create these live levels. So the levels are actually created dynamically oh. by the model, not necessarily hard coded. So okay. Cool. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, because you can see the level, the, the level itself is uh, is very kind of hectic and, and crazy looking, yeah. but that's basically because it it is being generated automatically, with with the use of generative AI and Amazon Bedrock, and I can do this. Oh, um, now <laughs> okay, I, I, I stop. Um, let's have a look at the code <laughs> to see how this game actually functions. It is a web game, right? I can see Amplify here already. Um, it is part of it, but. Um, I want, I want to actually see where in this game they're using Amazon Bedrock, right? Because I know that they are using Amazon Bedrock. Again, the workspace feature is great for you to find these kinds of things. Let's see what, what Amazon Q finds in our source code. Okay. It seems to be implemented in two use level gener generator TSX file, and there's also um, here. So let's go into the, into the, uh, use level generator, use level generator. So let's have a look at this code here. So this again, it's a TypeScript code and it is using Amplify well, as, as it's kind of a front end thing. Uh, generating levels, it, there, there's a function here called generate levels um, and it's sending some data. So I'm gonna check this out. Uh, Amazon Q explain, I want Amazon Q to explain to me this thing. Let's break down the highlighted code block, right? It's, 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 a, it's a function, right? It's called generate level. Uh, makes an API call, likely an AWS Amplify, Amplify client. So it's probably using something in the back end to actually generate this thing. And it also, also returns some level data. Now, um, the beautiful part about this is that the, that the developers have actually explained this in their blog post. Um, if I go ahead and open up their link here, you will see this. Um, this example of how they have actually, here's the wonderful prompt they're using to, to actually generate the levels. It's, a, it's a basically using a 2D array to generate a level and get something like this, which is kind of fantastic because they send this as an example to Amazon Bedrock and they get returned something, um, something, something back that can be actually represented as a level that looks like, well, this, yeah, which is pretty nifty. Great example of good prompt engineering. I'm sure they worked on that quite a bit to make sure that it was generating some good levels before they threw it into prod. Exactly, exactly. And, and this is a good example of how they use generative AI to kind of figure these things out because from what I understand, like they weren't even aware of some of the database services they can use to build this game. Yeah, exactly. There's a voiceover within the games as you play it that's completely generated by Polly, um, which is pretty cool. They yeah. mentioned that they didn't even know about the service until they chatted with Q to see what else could be added to the game. It's a good way to kind of discover some of some of the services, and uh, and also they use Amazon Bedrock in, in the back end, as you can see here, to actually do the generation of the levels. Okay, and for our first place winner, Farm Build Fight. Now in this game. You're actually um, going through day by day and trying to survive the scary night. Um, so things will happen, you can farm, you can fight some ghouls, um, but you have to survive the night. And it's actually pretty hard. I could not get past day one, if I'm honest. Oh, really? um, it's okay. actually quite difficult. <laughs> um, so some cool aspects from the developers in this game. First, they mentioned the total production time was about two months, and only 20% of that was coding time, which is pretty amazing. They were using, of course, Amazon Q Developer to help with some of the development. Um, some of the aspects that uh, we'll have Darko show here in a second in the demo, as you're walking around in the game, it sort of looks a bit like Pokemon, I would exactly, say, yeah. right? Um, kind of in that 8-bit um, aspect. Um, you're interacting with some of the NPCs, and they actually are aware of your in-game statuses, uh, how many days you've lived or survived, and their prompts are generated by Bedrock Nova. So these developers 
uh, are using some state-of-the-art models here to actually um, have us interact with the game itself. Um, they mentioned that because uh, Amazon Bedrock Nova was pretty new, they weren't quite sure how to get the prompts into the right spots. So they actually chatted with Q Developer um, to try to get into those um, appropriate formats. And yeah, Darko, let's Actually, take it to the code. I, I'm trying to find <laughs> NPCs. Oh, yeah. There's no there's NPCs. A uh, there's a map. There's a map. I believe it's. Yeah, there it is. Uh, so they're kind of by the houses. Okay. It's a very big game, actually. It is, it is. It, it is. plays really smoothly. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's oh. very rich visual elements. I'm a sucker for this visual style, so yeah. keep making these kinds of games. Yeah, uh, here it invest is. in level two ho for better farming efficiency. Yeah, so this NPC that Darko just ran into mm -hmm. is actually one that is basically giving you tips about how to survive, and it, it'll generate different dialogue based on how many days you've been alive, what are the potential um, monsters or villains that are going to come in at night. Um, so in that case, I mentioned that he should invest in some better gear, right? Better gear, yes. Yeah, better, better tool, gear. Yeah, better tools. Now, what, what, what's fascinating about this thing, again, it, it uses generative AI in the back. As, 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 as Laura mentioned, it's using um, the Nova models on Amazon Bedrock to be able to kind of generate these things. So you know what? Let's Let's go back, look at the code. So somewhere here, I think it's in the MPC file here, right? This is where it has create context prompt. Look at this. Um, it has this whole uh, function, a Python function here, where you're an NPC character. We're already throwing some information back to the model. Your task, respond with a single sentence between 8 to 15 words. Fantastic. And then um, it's a Lambda function. It's literally a Lambda function there that goes ahead and calls Amazon Bedrock. Um, with this, so I'm gonna actually I'm gonna show you how this. I'm, we're gonna take this whole lambda handler function, and uh, since it's a big function, I want us I want this thing to thing to be explained. Uh, it it it's a big function because specifically there's a lot of try and accepts. Thank you. You should use that always in Python. But it's gonna go ahead and explain this lambda function to us here um, using Amazon Q Developer. So this code is a Lambda function, right? It knows that this is an Amazon Lambda function, and it acts as a conversational, convers conversational NPC, non-player character, uh, in a game using Amazon Bedrock's AI capabilities. I love it. Again, huge fan of this. It has error handling, re response process. Again, I, I you know, grew up growing up with games with like RPG elements that have like incredibly fixed responses, and you kind of get yeah. bored after a time. Um, this kind of kind of works really well because it goes ahead and and extracts a response from an AI that can make your game kind of interesting. What I do like that you mentioned here, that, that this thing knows all about me. Mm -hmm. It knows, I think, I'm trying to see here. Okay, so yeah, see, it has player stats. Yeah. You see how many games played, how many consecutive games, how many days survived, killed, like it knows this, these details and sends it over to the model and then the model responds. Yeah, and there's also, uh, I don't think we showed it in the demo, but as you enter from the boat into this island, you actually interact with an NPC who greets you um, tells you how many days you've survived. Oh, okay. Can also make some funny quips uh, if you died by ghost uh, the previous night. It okay. can sort of give you a little bit of a joke about it. I uh, see. Welcome, rookie. Yes. Right, so every first day. Okay, so it knows. Oh, ah, that's really really cool. Okay, yeah. amazing. I like that. I like that. Ah, this is great. Very cool. Um, see, like I love the, how how people come up with with, with really cool things like this. Uh, again, um, and I, I'm sure folks behind this. Uh, know how to code, you know how to build, but again, thanks to some services from AWS like Bedrock and also Q Developer, it has helped them um, build these games really, really well. Now, we're going to link uh, in down in the description um, the blog post accompanying these games so you can actually read through the adventure these people had building these games. And uh, you can also, some of these games are still accessible and you can go and check them out. Yeah, the Game Bros, some of them are also public, so you can go in and also take a look at the code like we did. And there it is, the top three submissions to our latest hackathon. What do you think about this, Laura? It was incredible, honestly, seeing some of these games be developed by folks who don't have developer experience. They talk about how um, easy and kind of interesting it was to work with Q Developer for these games. And we have the products right here, right? They're beautiful, they're fun, um, really interactive. Yeah, very cool. It, Great it, job. It definitely blows my mind that like with the the future of software development with generative AI tools actually help people who are incredibly creative, have all of these ideas, but helps them put all of that yeah. into actual code. So folks out there, if you are hesitant that uh, you have like have an idea for a game, you want to build that, check out Amazon Q Developer. It can actually help you code that. It can help you build these things even if you do not have a lot of experience because this is going to get you experience. This is going to get you some knowledge to actually go build that. 
Remember, Amazon Q Developer is free. You can go and check out the link in the description, install it on your favorite text editor, VS Code, JetBrains, whatever, uh, and go start building today. And also, don't forget, keep an eye out for more hackathons yes. coming over from AWS. Well, until next time, we're gonna go play some fight build farm thingy. <laughs> Bye.